Well, as you can see, we are back at the castle again. <clears throat> we are pulling second shift today. Our goal is hopefully the clouds will cover up this sun because it is crazy hot. However, our goal today is to get the ICF crutched, strapped, foamed, staked, get it ready for pour tomorrow, get all of our penetrations in, etc. So let's get this going. So before we take off with getting more strapping and the proper everything on the ICF to be prepared for pour, I wanted to point out one of the great things about working with Superform. I know there's been a lot of questions. Uh, Superform, it's the first time I've used it. Mentioned that in the last video. But not can you only get ICF block. My shipment came in, yes, it was my fault that it didn't come in with the ICF shipment. I forgot to order it. But this is all of the brackets and strapping with screws, foam, foam gun, everything that you need for your ICF build can be ordered through Superform. If there's something that they don't have, I'm here to tell you. Mention it to them. Let them know that that's what you use in your, your ICF build, and they'll get it. They'll find it, they'll ensure they can supply it, etc., etc. It's just, they're a great company to deal with. I've had nothing but great pleasure working with them. And now that the shipment's in, we can actually move along a little bit further. You guys remember I said the circles on the ICF are for the octagon plates. We'll show you all of those details here in a little bit. But those products are right there in those boxes. Came from Superform. Tickled to death I can get everything from one place. Now let's get this going. All right, so what you guys saw us do in the last video was get this stacked and get the vertical two by fours in place and the stiff backs along the top of the wall. Vertical two by fours are what we're gonna use to screw our two by twelves to so that it keeps this thing tight and straight and plumb. Yes, I'm probably still going to put a couple of kickers down towards the bottom, but that'll minimize the amount of holes that I need to drill in the concrete. And I'll also probably put some 45 boards on the 2x12s to tie everything together. But I believe this is going to minimize the amount of scrap that we have when we cut up boards for certain lengths, etc., etc., because the 2x12s will actually be mounted in joist brackets on the inside of the ICF with a band board all the way around, a rim board, band board, skirt board, there's a whole bunch of different names for it. So essentially if I cut these 2x12s inside of wall to inside of wall, whenever we take them off and we put the subfloor in, there's actually going to be a 2x12 along that wall on both sides and this side that will ensure it's three inches further in that that two by 12 has to span. So yes, we'll have to cut them twice, but that's okay. It ensures that we don't have any waste and we don't have to cut up a bunch of two by fours for 45 degree angle crutches, etc. And I saw a comment and, that had a specific question. Can you get the MST bar with 90s? Will they bend them for you? The answer to your question is yes, 100%. They will bend them, as you can see here. This is a 90 degree angle that came straight from, if I said super form, I meant MST. I don't know what I said there, but they will send you 90s. And once we get to the 11 foot tall wall, there may be a special guest coming in the next few videos that has uh, maybe some experience in ICF. I'm gonna leave it at that. But uh, 90s do come from MST bar. Cut to length if you've got a large enough job, if you are going to be a distributor, etc., etc. If you need 10 foot lengths, they'll send you 10 foot lengths. If you want four foot lengths and you're going to buy a semi load of four foot lengths, they'll send you four foot lengths, 10 foot, 11 foot, 20 foot. In that stack right over there, there's actually 20 foot bar on the right and 11 foot bar on the left because my walls are going to be 11 foot tall and I didn't want to have any waste 
whenever I had to cut a 20 footer down to 11 foot. So I asked for 11 footers. I had enough to bring a full order in with the two orders that I placed. So a semi load came in with my custom cuts. That's not something they're gonna do for small orders, but if you're ordering full semi loads, that is definitely something that they will support. Let's get some crutches on. All right, so step number one, before you start putting in those cross ties, we gotta make sure that this common is set. Yes, I did that already because I put the stiff backs on, but I did not explain to you guys how I did that. So essentially your common, can change your wall dimension if it doesn't stay put whenever you're stacking out. So essentially all I'm doing is making sure that my wall with the tape measure on top, which is kind of hard to do holding the camera, is 20 feet. And you guys can see there, we are dead nuts on 20 feet. So that tells me that I can go ahead and strap this common, which I could have done already, but I didn't. I used the stiff back in its place. But that ensures that you have your dimension that's needed. And now the other very key thing to pay attention to is you'll notice here I've got a short piece. This is what created the common. And the minimum quantity of studs that you want at the end or when you cut a piece is two studs. That's the absolute minimum. The great thing about Superform is their spacing is a little closer than everybody else. Everybody else is at eight inches. Superform is at six inches, which also adds more plastic content on the inside of the block, which equates to more rigidity, more support, more strength in the concrete. But that two stud block, when I say two studs, this is a stud, that's a stud. If this was one stud, this would be a very risky area for a blowout since it's two studs that minimizes the risk. But when you go to strap it, you don't want to just strap these two short pieces. I'm going to run one strap, two studs past the end, and two studs past the end to go from there all the way over to here to ensure that those two short blocks are tied in. And if you look on top, that block actually comes all the way over here so I can go two studs two studs and do a short strap from here to there and that will strap that common together great those two small pieces is the only reason why i've got to run a longer board on the bottom let's get these on Now you guys have a really good visual. That screw stripped out on me, we won't talk about that one. Really good visual of strapping. It cut across two studs on each side of the common and where I had two stud ends, I went two studs past that. So essentially you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight studs. That ensures that common isn't gonna move. And I know I disappeared there for a little bit, but I also put strapping on the inside to ensure that that common stays put for good. Now what we have to do is measure and confirm that all of our 2x12s are the same length. Come across the wall, measure and make sure we're at 20 feet all the way, start to finish. We know we are out here in this corner. And once I confirm those dimensions, I can start cutting 2x12s and screwing 2x12s to the face, or actually the side, the thickness of each of those 2x4s. Let's get that measured. One, two, three, come on. Come on, come on. Well, who do we have here? Hi, honey. So... I guess this is what happens whenever I come. Oops, you guys are facing way up there in the sky somewhere. I guess that's what happens whenever I complain. I said, I got a set two by 12s that are 18 foot, two inches long all by myself. It wasn't really the complaint, it was the pouting. Pouting? Honey, I don't pout. I don't pout. Okay, maybe a little. 
But, so this is our date night. Yay. The kids are spending the night at the grandparents because this is dead week for sports. That's all the dead week means. Um, and the grandparents wanted to, their grandbabies. And this is what we're doing for date night. I mean, as you- He's as taking you, me out tonight. Yeah, taking you out to the castle. Yeah. Welcome, my queen. Does it look a little different? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that up there? It looks way different, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Looks gooder. Huh? Yeah, looks gooder. Looks gooder. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're tired of us yakking. I guess we better get busy. You ready to carry some 18 foot, two inch long two by 12s? Yep. You want to carry them by yourself or you want to carry them together? You don't care? She said she doesn't care. I would not do that to you. <laughs> just, drag <it. laughs> just drag it across the ground. All right, so what I did, honey, was I confirmed our dimensions. These vertical two by fours that we have over here are what we're gonna screw those two by 12s to. Each one of those will get a two by 12, okay? So I measured them, everything measures 18 feet, one and a half inches. There is a quarter of an inch we could add to that, but I don't want this to be tight. <clears throat> I want this to go in easy, go together easy, and we don't have to fight it. So we're gonna cut them 18, one and a half inches. Okay. Where's all your workers? And this one. <laughs> that's, that's the workers we have today. So uh, you wanna cut? Or do you want to stay over here and I hand them to you and you pull them in? Don't care. Don't care? All right, let's figure it out. Well, I fibbed a little bit. I'm not going 18 foot one and a half because we measured a section on the wall and it was a little short of 20. We need to bump it out. What was it? Three a quarter, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So we're going 18 foot, one inch and three quarter. Now all we gotta do is that six more times and we can install.
Well, I'll tell you what, it's a good view here, but today's work scenery is a better view. I will say that. Anyway, thankfully, Felicia was here to help. That made putting them 2x12s in not too bad, honestly. We use the top seam of the middle course or the bottom seam of the top course, whichever you want to call it, because those are 12-inch block and these are 2x12s. So we just lined our 2x12s up on that seam to ensure that we are the same level both sides. We threw in 45 degree boards to tie all of the cross braces together. We also screwed that to our strapping to ensure that it ties off at the center point of the wall. The only place that we can't screw it off is the castle because it's rock. I am going to hammer drill in just a couple of stakes, probably four, two and two, just to ensure that <clears throat> this thing I have a sneaky suspicion if it does move, both of them are going to move, and it's probably going to be right in the centers. So if I throw some stakes on that one and some stakes on this one, that should control all that. And that's just straight down stakes. I might even throw a 45 and then throw a MST bar hammer drilled in the ground and, and uh, drill holes in them like I did the former drain there. <clears throat> but the next step is the octagon plates. You want to grab one of those out of that box there. This is actually the bracket that the skirt board, band board, whatever board you want to call it that goes against the wall that the floor joist will hang off of gets attached to. This bracket goes in the wall. So you take this and you're supposed to straddle a stud so that you can put a screw right there in the center, but we don't put screws in the center. So you come in right here and you see your stud. You just give yourself some marks then you take a sawzall and you cut slits and then you slide this in. But the whole reason for it is by the time that is, I know it's not gonna set this way, but you guys see it's flush against the wall there. These legs here off the back side stick through. So whenever you pour this wall, it actually has concrete attaching that bracket to the ICF, to the band board, to another metal bracket that screws on the outside of that band board into this metal bracket that's poured into concrete. So it is a way big time attachment and we like them, so that's what we use. Let's get these suckers installed. <clears throat> they go on the inside, but do you want to tell them what I did or you want me to? You like to point out my screw ups, right? Huh? <laughs> I just sat back and watched it. You did. So you guys saw that I had stiff backs all the way around and you see that there's no stiff backs on the inside over there anymore. So I have my stiff backs too far down for where the brackets need to go. This stiff back is okay. That stiff back was not. It is now on the outside. <sighs> I hate doing things to undo things and apparently I got in a hurry. I even painted the egg on circles before I put stiff backs on so that I knew where they went and I didn't put something in its way and lo and behold, I put something in its way. Anyway, it's time to put some octagon plates in finally. Let's do it. All right, we will show you guys installing one of these and then we'll put you on time lapse for all of them. But this top edge is the same as that flat right there. That flat right there is what needs to hit on that mark. This is the stud, it goes in between those two legs so as long as I span the stud and touch the line, give myself two little indentions, take my saws off, cut one, cut two, take the plate, put it in the grooves, it in and sometimes you hit your rebar whenever it's this high and that's okay won't hurt a thing there you go we're strapping it across the stud yeah that ended up in, right on that seam that's all right it's because i'm so close to this corner but that is an installed plate now we just have to do that 11 more times felicia's over there marking the two and three quarters down from the top let's get these plates installed because we're probably going to call it after this. What do you think? We're going to call it after this? It's getting pretty dark, ain't it?
Well, there you have it. All the octagon plates, you can see these better. All the octagon plates are in, on their mark, installed. All I have left to do in the morning before the concrete shows up is get the dryer vent plumbed in out of that wall because you want all of your penetrations in place prior to concrete going in so you don't have to core drill anything because that just that would suck so that is staked off all except for four pieces of rebar and four stakes i'm going to do that in the morning because i don't have the hammer drill with me i forgot it can you believe that i forgot the hammer drill I believe it. you believe it <laughs> thanks babe and i had great help tonight thank you so much babe it was greatly appreciated and saved my back a lot of aching so hopefully you guys enjoyed the staking off video. Yes, I will get a few more tomorrow morning shots of the final staking. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, like, comment, subscribe.